Hey gorgeous female managers. I wanted to talk to you today about time and this concept of owning your own time rather than giving away your time. So you'd be familiar with the fact that we all only have 24 hours a day. So it's actually our most precious resource. Doesn't matter how much money you make, how good your connections are or what you do, you simply cannot produce more time. So it's super important that we feel like we're in control in relation to our own time. And the fact that um, we can't manufacture anymore means that quite often we have this mindset around needing to do more in the same period of time as perhaps somebody else might. So I wanna talk about meeting effectiveness today and how that relates to you actually owning your time and how you can claim back that ownership of that very precious resource. So. One of the things that I notice is, particularly at the moment, a lot of women in the space that I coach and mentor in are working excessive hours, 12, 13 hours a day sometimes at their computer, at their desk, at home primarily. And they've been called to more and more meetings because quite interestingly enough, some people can't just come in and put their butt on, on the side of your desk and you know, ask for your opinion on something or run something by you or seek out your approval for something. So they're probably more inclined to want to call a meeting and collectively, we're being drawn into more and more meetings as a result of that, which is why I believe our time is being blown out and women are working 12, 13 hour days. So here's the thing, when you're called to a meeting or if you're the person who is going to own the meeting, it's what, something that's really valuable is, is for you to state the outcome or to understand the outcome before you accept that meeting. And this is a, an NLP principle that we use, start with the end in mind. So know where you're headed in that meeting. What do, you, what do the people who are inviting you want from you or what do you want if you're calling the meeting from the people who you're inviting? Super important to understand that from the outset and to actually communicate that. And it might be one of a, a variety of things. You might want a decision on something. You know, you might want, um, you might want it as an information session. Um, you might, you know, and, and it's important for you to communicate this from the very outset so that people can pre-frame their unconscious mind to the next point, which is what the requirements are of the meeting. So point number two is, make sure that everybody understands what's required of them from the meeting. So as well as the outcome, where we're going to come to a decision for it, for example, it's important that people understand that in this meeting, we're going to review some reports, we're going to review some information, you're going to get a monthly update, and from there, we need to make a decision on how we're going to proceed next month in relation to this particular thing, issue, project, topic. So that's the second thing. What are the requirements of everybody involved? And again, if you're not the person calling the meeting and you want to claim back some of your time, ask them what's required in this meeting. You know, and that can sometimes spark, you know, the requirement for pre-reading or a report to be distributed beforehand so that people have time to digest that information and aren't being asked to make decisions in an awkward situation, particularly for reflector type people people who like to look back on things before they actually make a decision. So that brings me to the third point, and the third point is expectations. So as a result of having a clear outcome stated up front and having everybody know what's required of them in the meeting, what are the expectations beyond that? So, you know, what are the delivery times? What are the response times and methods? If you're asking people for their opinions, then you're probably going to need to collate those opinions or collate that feedback and those responses somewhere or somehow. So making sure that you're clear about that from the outset and whether you capture it on a tool, um, you know, whether it's something like SharePoint or um, a tool like monday.com or whether it's, it's something that people need to forward back to you by way of survey or email, it's important that those expectations are stated up front and so that people are clear about when the deadlines are. We sometimes find in big teams that projects blow out way beyond the initial time frame set down and it's because people take annual leave, people become sick, people leave the organisation um, and people are unclear as to what needs to be done by when. So a great way for you to reclaim your time is 
to follow those three steps. If you're the person setting the meeting, then be clear with everybody that you're inviting or everybody that you want involvement from as to number one, the outcome, number two, the requirements, and number three, the expectations. And if you're not the person calling the meeting, then ask that information of the EA or, um, or the person who's at the manager who's actually calling the meeting or the person who's actually calling the meeting. Super important and a great way for you to start to reclaim some of your time and pare back some of those 12 to 13 hour days to something that's more reasonable. I trust that helps. I'm Chris Bacconi, life strategist and mentor to savvy female managers.